Hello everybody, welcome back. We're continuing with 3.3. Three. Looking at example 2, factoring trinomials. There's a couple ways you can do this. So the first method I will do using the triangles, um, the uh, algae tiles, sorry. And the algae tiles are fine. Um, it's not my favorite, the grouping method. So what we'll do is we'll go to the algae tiles for a minute here. All right. And we need five ones, so one, two, three, four, five, and then we need uh, ten Zs, negative Zs, so we're going to get ten of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten, and then we need five negative z squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, um, and then we just back to this, um, so obviously we're going to need to spin these, put them on here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, spin these, 1, One, two, three, four, five, and then you put your ones and it doesn't work out. So this is one of the limitations. Obviously, there's no way to make a rectangle here, but you can still factor these if you can group them into pairs. Okay, so you'll notice that obviously um, they can't be, uh, you can't make a rectangle. So that's what limits the algae tiles, unfortunately, uh, but there is going to be a question on the provincial with these, so we uh, do want to show you these, um, but if you can group them in five equal groups, that allows you to find the GCF. All right, so I'm going to put them in five equal groups here. Again, they don't have to be attached a certain way when you're grouping them. I'm just trying to show that they're in five groups, so they're you know what I mean? So we have five equal groups, and since we have five equal groups, we can factor out a five. Okay? Again, there's limitations on this. This is why it's not one of my favorite um, ways to do this. Okay? So I'm going to take a picture of that, those five equal groups. So that's method one. All right, method one. So we factor it a five, this trinomial, All right? And we factor out a five. All right, because so we get five equal groups. So we got five is the GCF bracket, one minus two. Z, that's what's left over, right? Because 5 times 2Z would be 10Z. Minus Z squared. And there you are. Okay? There it is. Alright. Method 1. Use the algae tiles. Or you can do method two using the greatest common factor. So we list our, what you want to do is you want to list your terms. So we have five, and the factors of five are obviously five and five. And we got, don't worry about the negative right for now, but you will take the negative with you. So it'll be one, 
put one in if you want. It, it, one's not necessary. It's up to you. 2, 5, 10, and Z. And then the next one is the 5Z squared. Five it squared, and that's going to equal one five z z. Oh, lower z is fine. Z z. And then you just get the common one in both, which is or now three, which is five five and five. Which obviously gives you the same, and then you would just leave the left left over, right? So that's how to factor um, the two different methods. Algae tiles, eh, limitations on that. It's not my favorite method. Um, and then using the greatest uh, common factor, which is the method that I'm going to show you uh, day in and day out. All right. Next one we have is factoring polynomials in more than one variable. So sometimes you'll have more than one variable to deal with. Um, so definitely the algae tiles, you can throw these out the window at this point. So we're going to find the greatest common factor and then factor that and go from there. Okay. So I'm going to list all three of my terms. All right. We have negative uh, 12x cubed y. Your second one is negative 20 xy squared, and our third and final is negative 16 x squared y squared. All right, and now we're, we're going to list all the factors. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, x, 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 and y. Okay. Next one we have, and don't worry about the negative, the negative, obviously you can take that whenever you need to. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, X, Y, and Y. And the next one is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, X, X, Y, Y. So I'm listing all the factors of my three terms in my trinomial, in my polynomial here. Now you're going to list the GCF of each, so they all have a 4. So the greatest common factor is going to be 4. And then what common variables do they have? They all have 1x, so we'll take an x. And they all have one Y, so we'll take a Y. So the GCF is going to be so the GCF is going to be four X Y. Four X Y. All right, so there's your, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to factor that out, and we're going to basically do that distributive property, and what does each term have to multiply by in order to get that back, so we take our, and this is how we show our factoring, all right, it's going to be equal to your 4xy, all right, and that's going to be multiplied by what's left over in each. All right. So there's going to be three of these because there's three terms. And then what you have to do is multiply what's left over here. So what do we got left? And notice they're all negative. So if they're all negative, I would recommend taking a negative out front. Okay. So I'll take that negative. 
out front of each. All right, so it's going to be negative 4y, and then we're going to be left with bracket. So what do I multiply 4 by in order to get uh, negative 4 by to get 12? So it's going to be positive 3. Oh, positive 3. How many x's are we left with? Well, we used 1, and there's um, 3 total, so that means there's 2 left. You guys remember your exponent laws? Okay. So that means there's two left. And there's only one Y to start with. We have one Y left. So that's it for that one. And remember, we're taking a negative 4XY out of all of these terms. So and we're going to be left with do the same thing here. We have 5. The X's are all used up. So we only have a Y left to use. And then bring in the last turn that we've run a factor. So 16, so that would give us a 4. And there's an x and squared y squared, so there's an xy left on both of these. All right. So that's the first step, is to factor out the GCF and all of them. Okay. And that's going to equal... It's going to equal, so the first factor, what we do is we write this first factor once, and then the all three of what we have left over, that comes out to be our remaining trinomial. Right, so we get the 3x squared plus the 5y. Plus the four x y. And this is now factored. And if you want to verify this, you can verify or check this. We call it verifying or checking. To see if these are right. So we can expand this. And we learned how to expand and multiply when we were in. So we take the original, and we expand it and multiply it. So just going in the opposite direction, essentially. So the negative 4x squared, we're going to use the distributive property. So the negative 4x squared multiplied by... this first term oh. uh, cheat because it ended up being back the same way but you guys can verify all right I'm not going to because I know it's right and it works back out right Let them out, and it gives us back the original. We do it now. Obviously, I know we're right because we did it, but it doesn't hurt to multiply that out just to make sure. Okay. You just go backwards to verify or check it. All right. Just check your understanding. You guys can try that one. There's answers right here beside you. You can take a peek. All right. So some homework questions that go along with this. They're on pages 155, numbers 4 through 10, 12, 14, and 18. And you can just use odd letter questions. All right. In the next video, we'll do 3.4, modeling trinomials as binomial products. This is really getting into factoring. Okay. So thanks again, folks. And we'll, uh, we'll see you again in the next video.